Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, please uh, notice that in the back corner, the bar is open. So just wanted to make sure in case you wanted to jump up on that. Um, I won't keep you too long from that. My name is Chad Jones, Vice President of Internet Things Strategy for LogMeIn. We offer a platform known as Zively. Um, you know, I wanted to go through a little bit about our philosophy of what the Internet of Things means, because it's important to really tie together our approach through our platform against what we really see is going on in the market. So the Internet of Things is about transforming businesses and lives. It's not just about technology. So if we think about really what is out there, what is in needed to have the ingredients to be transformative for business? Well, all of our businesses already have customers. We already have different systems we use, ERP systems, CRM systems, business intelligence, and processes that are inside of that. Data and analytics, devices that are attaching to that, and of course, applications. All of those things are attached to the internet. But a second class citizen that's sitting out there that affects every single one of our businesses are the physical objects that we put out there. We can't control those today. So what do we do? We end up putting a carbon-based subjective sensor, a human, in between there to actually be reactive to different things that happen. If a freezer in a scientific setting breaks down, no, it's not just gonna call home. You have to actually have someone call it and then someone kicks off the service chain for that. Well, that's highly inefficient. Everything else is addressable over the internet. Why not these things? Well, as we've moved over time, you know, these things are now really coming together into, through the internet of things trend, into the internet. So really, we view that the internet of everything plays a real key role here. The internet of things is really a subset of the internet of everything. It is adding value and making these physical objects in our world addressable. It is not about a revolution where the IoT takes over everything, it is additive. So with that in mind, we really have the potential to holistically transform business end to end. We can do that between sales, service, marketing, by granularly being able to target exactly what people need when they need them. We can understand the behaviors of people because of this. Um, looking at product development and even finance across businesses can be transformed by this type of innovation, by this type of evolution. But the problem is if I'm gonna build any sort of solution, it's not just app, object, and the, this magical cloud that connects everything together. Right? It's really the seven steps that you see in front of you, and they're convoluted, they're complex, it's difficult, and it takes time. That's just the simple reality. Now, if you start on the left-hand side, the seven steps are really looking at the business case first. You have to look at that exhaustively. Then actually connecting, building a connected object, selecting platforms and all of those things. Building an infrastructure that has every single one of these gray line items that you see in front of you. API, security, load balancing, geo balancing, all of those types of things. And then going on and building an application, not just an end user app, but an operations application as well. And then worrying about tying into business systems that we already have existing, CRM, ERP, those types of things. And then doing the analytics and automation, and then eventually service and support. So those steps are, every single one of those are necessary to build these product lines. But if we think about all of the things we're trying to attach together, they all have different API, different security models, all of those types of things. It's incredibly complex to try to tie them together and then scale that. But to solve that problem, that's where LogMeIn and Zively comes in. So we sit at the center of that. Now, the reality is that there's no platform that can do end-to-end -end types of things, right? There, you have to collect the business services that are already existing inside of companies and tie physical objects into what they're doing. Now, to be able to do that, you really need three things. You need a platform that can bring those things together. You need to leverage the innovation of third-party partners because we can't all do it ourselves. If I tried to make hardware, there's no way we could even come close to the amount of innovative hardware that's accelerating out there today. You've got to be able to leverage those things. And then being able to provide services that at this point in the market, you're able to look at customers and say, look, you're just starting on this journey. And most people think it's, ah, let's just internet connect something. But that's not the case. That's not going to bring you that business value. So we have to help people understand what's the business potential that you actually have. And then over time, self-service will come up. We have self-service interfaces in our platforms and things like that. But at this point, you need help to think through the business case and then take tech and backfill that. 
And we solve for that problem. So our engagement through our particular professional services, which again is for this stage in the market, we're empowering a whole systems integration channel to work with our platforms, uh, allows you to first step through and say, let's envision what your use case looks like. So let's not sit down and, and just jump right to technology because it's not going to serve you well. And it's in our best interest for you to have a successful implementation just as is uh, in your best interest to have one for yourself. So envision that. Get exhaustive about the business case and the tech will take care of itself. We already make it easy to backfill technology and enable these use cases. And then take you through your proof of concept into pilot. And our whole mission is to teach you. How do you actually build these things over time. We don't want to come in and be in your hip pocket forever. So it's about teaching you how to fish, giving you a really killer boat, and let you go off and catch all the fish you want. We're always there to help you out over time, but it's about empowering you. So we are experts in being able to tie together all of the different systems that are necessary to make these connected solutions real and provide real value for your business. Now, on top of that, leveraging a partner ecosystem is critical. There's so much innovation out there. We approach it through an open source uh, philosophy. So on GitHub today, you can go up and download uh, any number of libraries that support thousands of platforms out there. And we will continue to do that going forward because those platforms are the things you need to bring in to leverage their innovation to make your solution come to life as quickly as possible. Um, we do that basically over our chipset partners, over different um, uh, visualization partners, data analytics partners, systems integrators to help build those solutions, and then also we're members of different alliances. And those alliances are great, they help push our common interests, but for us we're protocol agnostic, you want to use MQTT, you want to use WebSockets, it's up to you, right, because it's, each protocol has different value. Use it that's going to fulfill the best need for your solution. We support all of them. So from there, our platform as a service is robust, built on the scale of what is known as gravity. Log me in. Our parent company has been around for 11 years. We, connect 10, we make 10 trillion, with a T, connections a year between all of our products. And we have other products that ride on that same infrastructure, but Zively is built into that gravity infrastructure. So scale is our forte. Um, on top of that, we offer different services that rapidly bring those objects together, identify them, give them robust permissions through a messaging bus, and then have a trust engine so they can communicate very securely between whatever is authorized. We have other products that are already in the LogMeIn portfolio that helps with doing remote break fix, such as rescue, remote screen sharing, because a lot of things will end up being headless in those objects, so you've got to be able to see them to troubleshoot them. Uh, and then a file storage service called Cubby, where you can store different files, so uh, configuration file schedules, those types of things. All of these things come together to accelerate creating connected products and meet your business vision as quickly as possible. Right now, worldwide devices, if we looked at the, the map here, this is just a snapshot from a few months ago. If you were able to zoom in, uh, we have hundreds of thousands of devices around the world. You can see some are in Antarctica, some are floating out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, some are a little freaked out because they're in Ukraine right now. <laughs> so uh, we have devices that are everywhere. Now, part of that are companies bringing their devices onto our solution. Others are people that have just built things that we don't even know about and have deployed them around the world. So again, the combination of these things grows our infrastructure very quickly. Now, if we think about back to the seven steps that we looked at and how much time it normally takes to build these solutions, by doing it with Zively, we save about 60% of the time that it takes to bring a connected product to market. Now, let's take uh, some real-world use cases to see how that works. So we have a company, uh, one customer called New England Biolabs. They make uh, DNA acceleration enzymes and reagents. So basically, really tiny scissors that cut DNA, glue that resequences it back together, and then cloning kits that actually will clone that DNA as well. And what an amazing time we live in, you know, for, for those things to happen. They would have to, the researchers would have to order these things. FedEx would come with a frozen bag, they'd store them. If the freezer would go bad on site with the scientists, they'd lose a $5,000 vial. It's about this big. 
right? And we're all in the wrong business. A vial of this stuff's five grand, right? So it's not like I, you know, gone for Memorial Day and, you know, my freezer goes bad and I lose $50 worth of chicken. You know, this is a little bit different. Um, they thought the same thing. Look, we'll put a freezer out on site. Someone will pull out stock, scan it, and we'll track inventory and it'll be great. And it'll just be an app and this magical cloud that makes it happen and away you go. But we came in and said, look, for a little bit of incremental investment, and if you think through the business case more clearly, let's monitor things like open and close the door. Put a lock on it so that you actually make somebody log into the system. And let's tie it into a bunch of the other things that are already in your business systems today so you have a contiguous system that takes the carbon-based subjective sensor out of it. Now, that human's not gone, it's not rise of the machines, it's more evolved uh, participation by that human for a more strategic type of viewpoint for the business while the mundane is handled by the machines. So we sit in the middle of that and make the connection of these things and the logic of these things very, very simple to tie together. So in the case of New England Biolabs, this is an example of their architecture. So you'll see that we're using Salesforce Service Cloud, Marketing Cloud, Sales Cloud. Um, we're also leveraging uh, Epicor as the ERP system. You then have Heroku, where the application is hosted. And then on your, I think it's right, you actually see the freezer. This is the first generation freezer with a tablet. The second generation freezer basically works off of your phone. So you walk up, has an app, it knows who you are. Now the use case here is pretty powerful. A uh, researcher will walk up, it's sitting, you know, all the uh, content is sitting right there in the middle of their lab. They'll tap a badge open the freezer. Okay, well, we detected it open. They sit there for two minutes. Don't touch anything. They close it. That actually goes to Marketing Cloud, which sends a message to that particular user and says, hey, we noticed you opened the freezer but didn't touch anything. You're probably confused on how to use it. Here's what's in it and how to use it. Hour later, guy comes back, taps his badge. We register that, opens up, touches protonase line A, protonase line B inside of there because we have weighted system on there. Doesn't buy anything, closes it. Send another marketing cloud message that says, hey, we saw you touch protonase line A and B. You're probably confused on what they do. Here's what they're, they're helpful for. Hour later, he goes back, taps his badge, opens it up, picks up protonase line B, closes, scans it, purchases it, and uh, logs out. Now, what we've been able to do is have a marketing and sales nurture campaign without anybody interacting with that person. Now, the researcher's job isn't to buy stuff out of a freezer. It's to move their research along. So essentially, what we've done is not marketed to the person. We've empowered them through just-in-time advice because we can see the behavior of where they're going. Beyond that, there's about $250,000 worth of stock inside of this freezer, so it can't go bad. So we monitor the entire freezer itself, and we see that the, the chiller ends up uh, drawing more power, starts to go down, the temperature slowly rises. That's probably an event where we can calculate the mean time to failure of that device. So we'll end up sending an event to Service Cloud. Service Cloud will open up a ticket send around uh, somebody out to actually fix the, the uh, chiller before it goes bad. But you know what? If the window is, say, seven days out, and the mean time to failure is six days, well, that can't stand. But let's say the service, uh, service cloud would actually know that the stock in the freezer can take a four degree variance. So it sends a message back to the freezer and say, increase your temperature three and a half degrees to take the load off of the actual chiller, and that way I buy two more days in mean time to failure. The person shows up, not with a truck with you know, five different equivalent freezers of parts to troubleshoot what's going on. He shows up in a Prius you know, with basically a chiller, replaces it, the freezer says it's okay, and the ticket is closed. All handled automatically. Beyond that, you can actually see what's being purchased and when. So I can say, okay, if I don't have uh, any sort of, if someone's buying a bunch of glue but no scissors, well, I can't glue something without cutting it. So let me send you a little campaign that says, hey, buy glue and scissors for the next you know, two months, it's 20% off, and you expand your revenue. Another, oh, by the way, first handshake to first five freezers in production, less than 100 days, less than 100 days. Another company, Lutron, they make lighting, uh, just announced a Casita uh, um, system, gateway, that brought out to market. You can buy it on Amazon today, controls your lights, all of those types of things. Uh, Casita has our technology running inside of its gateway and then uses uh, radio frequency to control all of the different lights and those things. From first handshake to going to production, not beta, to, to production that I can buy it on Amazon, four months. Four months. 
Originally slated to be eight months to go to beta, we cut all of that time out because of solving the main problems that you see, plus they get all of the learning inside of it as well through sales cloud, service cloud, and those types of things. Last one, Verdiva uh, is a startup. They actually are looking at changing how usage-based taxation and uh, mileage is actually calculated. They're not doing it by tracking where a car goes, they're using it by flipping it around and having uh, based a, a calculation on miles per gallon, those types of things. Two months to actual production. So with that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I will remind you again, the bar's in the back, but most importantly, what does your heart tell you? Vote for Zively, please. You know. <laughs> thank you very much.